Henrik Johan Ibsen 20 March 1828 to the 23rd of May 1906 was a Norwegian playwright and theater director. As one of the founders of modernism in theater, Ibsen is often referred to as the father of realism and one of the most influential playwrights of his time. His major works include Brand, Peer Gint, An Enemy of the People, Emperor and Galilean, Adol's House, Hedda Gabler, Ghosts, The Wild Duck, When We Dead Awaken, Rosmersholm, and The Master Builder. Ibsen is the most frequently performed dramatist in the world after Shakespeare, and A Doll's House was the world's most performed play in 2006. Ibsen's early poetic and cinematic play Peer Gint has strong surreal elements. After Peer Gint Ibsen abandoned verse and wrote in realistic prose. Several of his later dramas were considered scandalous to many of his era, when European theater was expected to model strict morals of family life and propriety. Ibsen's later work examined the realities that lay behind the facades, revealing much that was disquieting to a number of his contemporaries. He had a critical eye and conducted a free inquiry into the conditions of life and issues of morality. In many critics estimates The Wild Duck and Rosmersholm are, vying with each other as rivals for the top place among Ibsen's works, Ibsen himself regarded Emperor and Galilean as his masterpiece. Ibsen is often ranked as one of the most distinguished playwrights in the European tradition, and is widely regarded as the foremost playwright of the 19th century. He influenced other playwrights and novelists such as George Bernard Shaw, Oscar Wilde, Arthur Miller, Marguerite Yorsenar, James Joyce, Eugene O'Neill, and Miroslav Kreza. Ibsen was nominated for the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1902, 1903, and 1904. Ibsen wrote his plays in Danish, the common written language of Denmark and Norway during his lifetime, and they were published by the Danish publisher Gildendal. Although most of his plays are set in Norway, often in places reminiscent of Skine, the port town where he grew up, Ibsen lived for 27 years in Italy and Germany, and rarely visited Norway during his most productive years. Ibsen's dramas were informed by his own background in the merchant elite of Skine, and he often modeled or named characters after family members. He was the father of Prime Minister Sigurd Ibsen. Ibsen's dramas had a strong influence upon contemporary culture. Henrik Johan Ibsen was born on 20 March 1828 in Stockmangarden into an affluent merchant family in the prosperous port town of Skine in Bratsburg, Telemark. He was the son of the merchant Knud Plesner Ibsen and Marichin Cornelia Martin Altenberg Both parents belonged to the city's and county's elite. Ibsen's ancestors were primarily merchants and shipowners in cities such as Skine and Bergen, or members of the aristocracy of officials of Upper Telemark, the region's civil servant elite. Henrik Ibsen later wrote that, My parents were members on both sides of the most respected families in Skine, and that he was closely related to just about all the patrician families who then dominated the place and its surroundings. He was baptized at home in the Lutheran state church, membership of which was mandatory, on the 28th of March and the baptism was confirmed in Christian's church on the 19th of June. When Ibsen was born, Skine had for centuries been one of Norway's most important and internationally oriented cities, and a center of seafaring, timber exports and early industrialization that had made Norway the developed and prosperous part of Denmark-Norway. His parents, though not closely related by blood, had been reared as social first cousins, sometimes described as near siblings in a social sense. 16. Knud Ibsen's father, ship's captain and merchant Henrik Johan Ibsen, 1765-1797, died at sea when he was newborn in 1797 and his mother Joanne Plesner, 1770-1847, married Captain Olpaus, 1766-1855. The following year, Knud grew up as a member of the Paus family. His stepfather Olpaus was a descendant of the aristocracy of officials in Upper Telemark, as a child Paus had been taken in by a relative, Skine merchant Christopher Blom, and he had become a ship's captain and shipowner in Skine, acquiring the Burger ship in 1788. Like Henrik Johan Ibsen before him Paus became the brother-in-law of one of Norway's wealthiest men, 
Diederik von Kapelen, whose first wife Maria Plesner was Joanne's sister. In 1799 Olp House sold the Ibsen House in Skynes Lovestrade at Lyons Street, which he had inherited from his wife's first husband, and bought the estate rising outside Skyne from a sister of his brother-in-law von Kapelen. Knud grew up at Rising with most of his many half-siblings, among them the later governor Christian Cornelius Paus and the shipowner Christopher Blom Paus. In the 1801 census the Paus family of Rising had seven servants. Many Ibsen scholars have compared characters and themes in his plays to his family and upbringing, his themes often deal with issues of financial difficulty as well as moral conflicts stemming from dark secrets hidden from society. Ibsen himself confirmed that he both modeled and named characters in his plays after his own family. 2022, however, Hoff criticizes the uncritical use of Ibsen's dramas as biographical sources and the naive readings of them as reflections of his family members. Evo de Figueredo argues that, today, Ibsen belongs to the world. But it is impossible to understand Ibsen's path out there without knowing the Danish cultural sphere from which he sprang, from which he liberated himself and which he ended up shaping. Ibsen developed as a person and artist in a dialogue with Danish theatre and literature that was anything but smooth. 47. The social questions which concerned Ibsen belonged unequivocally to the 19th century. From a modern perspective, the aspects of his writing that appeal most are the psychological issues which he explored. The social issues, taken up so prominently in his own day, have become dated, as has the late Victorian middle-class setting of his plays. The fact that, whether read and staged, they still possess a compelling power is testament to his enduring quality as a thinker and a dramatist. One occasion of the 100th anniversary of Ibsen's death in 2006, the Norwegian government organized the Ibsen Year, which included celebrations around the world. The NRK produced a miniseries on Ibsen's childhood and youth in 2006, An Immortal Man. Several prizes are awarded in the name of Henrik Ibsen, among them the International Ibsen Award, the Norwegian Ibsen Award and the Ibsen Centennial Commemoration Award. Every year, since 2008, the annual, Delhi Ibsen Festival, is held in Delhi, India, organized by the Dramatic Art and Design Academy Dada in collaboration with the Royal Norwegian Embassy in India. It features plays by Ibsen, performed by artists from various parts of the world in varied languages and styles. The Ibsen Society of America ESA, was founded in 1978 at the close of the Ibsen Sesquicentennial Symposium held in New York City to mark the 150th anniversary of Henrik Ibsen's birth. Distinguished Ibsen translator and critic Rolf Fjeld, professor of literature at Pratt Institute and the chief organizer of the symposium, was elected founding president. In December 1979, the ESA was certified as a nonprofit corporation under the laws of the state of New York. Its purpose is to foster through lectures, readings, performances, conferences, and publications an understanding of Ibsen's works as they are interpreted as texts and produced on stage and in film and other media. An annual newsletter Ibsen News and Comment is distributed to all members. On 23 May 1906, Ibsen died in his home at Arbens Gade 1 in Christiania, now Oslo, after a series of strokes in March 1900. When, on the 22nd of May, his nurse assured a visitor that he was a little better, Ibsen spluttered his last words, on the contrary, Tevertimod. He died the following day at 2.30 p.m. Ibsen was buried in Varfrelser's Graveland, the graveyard of Our Savior, in central Oslo. At the time when Ibsen was writing, literature was emerging as a formidable force in 19th century society. 34. With the vast increase in literacy towards the end of the century, the possibilities of literature being used for subversion struck horror into the heart of the establishment. Ibsen's plays, from a doll's house onwards, caused an uproar, not just in Norway, but throughout Europe, and even across the Atlantic in America. No other artist, apart from Richard Wagner, had such an effect internationally, inspiring almost blasphemous adoration and hysterical abuse abuse. After the publication of Ghosts, he wrote, 
While the storm lasted, I have made many studies and observations and I shall not hesitate to exploit them in my future writings. Indeed, his next play An Enemy of the People was initially regarded by the critics to be simply his response to the violent criticism which had greeted ghosts. Ibsen expected criticism, as he wrote to his publisher, ghosts will probably cause alarm in some circles, but it can't be helped. If it did not, there would have been no necessity for me to have written it. Ibsen didn't just read the critical reaction to his plays, he actively corresponded with critics, publishers, theater directors and newspaper editors on the subject. The interpretation of his work, both by critics and directors, concerned him greatly. He often advised directors on which actor or actress would be suitable for a particular role. An example of this is a letter he wrote to Hans Schroeder in November 1884, with detailed instructions for the production of The Wild Duck. Ibsen's plays initially reached a far wider audience as read plays rather than in performance. It was 20 years, for instance, before the authorities would allow ghosts to be performed in Norway. Each new play that Ibsen wrote, from 1879 onwards, had an explosive effect on intellectual circles. This was greatest for A Doll's House and Ghosts, and it did lessen with the later plays, but the translation of Ibsen's works into German, French and English during the decade following the initial publication of each play and frequent new productions as and when permission was granted, meant that Ibsen remained a topic of lively conversation throughout the latter decades of the 19th century. When A Doll's House was published, it had an explosive effect, it was the center of every conversation at every social gathering in Christiania. One hostess even wrote on the invitations to her soiree, you are politely requested not to mention Mr. Ibsen's new play.